Hello, sometimes you are working on projects that require functionalities that are not provided by the game engine that you are using and these functionalities may be provided by some uh, li external libraries. For example, in my case, uh, I need some functionalities for uh, the physics provided by the Jolt Physics and I'm doing this video to show how to integrate a physics engine in a real engine. So let's start. The game engines is uh, usually built in this way. We have a world that contains all the bodies that are simulated. Then we have the bodies that uh, are all the actors or the physical entities that uh, that essentially we simulate and each body has a shape. And also notice the contacts filtering. These are a set of classes uh, that make sure that the body collide or ignore depending on the layer that uh, on the layer setup. For example, the bodies that are on the same layer will collide while the bodies that are on a different layer will not collide. And this is managed by the contact filtering. Okay, now that you have uh, an overview on how game engine works, let's see the actual implementation. And the first thing that you want to have in order to implement a physics engine into a game engine, and in this case into a real engine, is initialize the physics engine. For, uh, for Jolt, what we need to initialize first is uh, uh, some functions that are used by the by Jolt in order to create bodies and shapes and things like that. So everything to manage the memory and then to register the types like shapes or bodies or other classes that are internally referenced by the engine. At this point, the phys Jolt physics is uh, initialized and we are ready to create the first piece of the puzzle, the actual world. And this is done by the initialize function of the Jolt class, which is, uh, let me actually show to you, which is a game instance subsystem that is created by Unreal each time you play the game. Inside this initialize function, what we are doing uh, is uh, creating the filtering classes, this one that I have shown and explained here, and, uh, and storing inside this uh, uh, pointer um, and I will use this uh, inside the J world creation. Here I am actually creating the main world and uh, the juicy of the work is done inside the constructor because it's calling the create world function. It creates a physics system that simulates the bodies and contains everything needed for the simulation and a temp allocator which is a piece of memory uh, used by Jolt as temporary uh, memory pool for the simulation. Uh, the job system is used by Jolt to manage uh, the, the multi-threading. And here we have finally the world creation. We read all the settings from world settings that I will explain in a moment. And here I am referencing the filtering class that I have explained here. Uh, so I am essentially assigning to the world. Okay, the, regarding the settings, uh, what I want to say that uh, uh, this class here, Jolt settings world that I have created, is a, a really handy way for uh, making sure, for exposing a bunch of properties uh, so, so that you can tweak the settings while you are into the editor like you are seeing right now. Okay, so now that the world is created, the other piece of the puzzle uh, remaining is the body and the shape creation. Actually, for the body and shape creation, as I have said initially, I wanted to make sure that uh, all the levels that we have right now works in uh, either the default physics engine uh, used by Unreal or the new physics engine that I am integrating, which is Jolt. So uh, instead of uh, reinventing uh, the actor class, I have created this little component here, which is uh, called Jolt Bodies Maker component that does something which is really simple. So 
once assigned to an existing actor, it reads all the components and, uh, and then for each component that uh, is a, an actual physical object into the world, it provides a shape and a jolt body and assign it to the, to the world. So that uh, all the actors that already exist inside the level can still work in either the old physics engine or the new one. So let's see how it works. Inside the begin play, we have the function make or update the jolt bodies for the actor. And when this function is executed, it reads, it fetches all the components. And for the one that are uh, that are representing a, a physics pro, physics uh, entity, they create a shape. If the shape is then created here down after a bunch of code that uh, uh, do managing things, uh, we actually create the body. The body is created by the body create and add. But what I want that you notice uh, are all these uh, functions here. Essentially, I am reading the actor properties like linear damping, angular damping, uh, or the friction, the restitution. So everything that is already assigned on the actor and on the components are read and used for the creation of the new body. The body creation, so this function is extremely straightforward. Uh, there is not much to explain other than showing the code that I have used here. The settings is populated with the uh, all the properties read from the actor. And then the body is created from the settings. And once the body is created, is then assigned to the world using these um, this API. So nothing really, uh, really important here, though there is uh, this piece of code that you may be uh, want to know. And essentially here is uh, the transformation conversion. Okay, let me explain that in Jolt we have a coordinate system that is different from the one that we use in a real engine. For example, in Jolt, the app direction is represented by the Y axis, while in a real is represented by the Z axis. And so we need to convert from one coordinate system to the other, but also the scaling, because Unreal uses centimeters, while um, Jolt uses meter, and we also need to convert that using Unreal to Jolt. A unit scalar. These are some function, and I can actually show how it works. It's essentially a remapping of the of the axis. All right, we created the body. Now let's create the shape. As uh, said before, the shape is created by make jolt shape by this function here, and it's really simple. It takes all the components and if the components is uh, one of this type, it creates the shape, re returns it and then the body is created. If we take as example one of these three types, box, sphere or capsule, the, the creation is uh, quite simple. Um, let me show it to you. Essentially it takes the component, extract the box size, and using that size after converting it to the Jolt uh, coordinate system, it makes the box shape. Then I want also to talk a bit about the static mesh component. Uh, this is a, a much more complex function, so I will not deeply about this function, but all you have to know is that using a static mesh component that therefore uses a static mesh, so an asset that usually is provided by the user, it could be a chair, a table, or really anything, an asset, uh, it fetches that asset and creates the shape for that asset. So that if you use an instance of that asset multiple times into your environment, the, that shape is created just one time and reused and instantiated many times. And that's quite cool and is done by fetching the get body setup that holds all the properties for the shape associated to the asset. 
let let me actually show how this uh, function works uh, really fast here we have the caching system that uh, makes sure to return always the same shape for the asset and here we are fetching all the properties associated to the asset and depending on the shapes assigned to the asset like boxes spheres convex tree meshes or a combination of these so everything that a user can set up for the asset uh, it creates the actual jot shape and returns it at this point we are we have everything we have the world we have the body we have the shape we have the contact filtering and we are ready to process and then to synchronize the result of the processing to the game engine and this is actually done by uh, the uh, the the ticking function that uh, uh, we have here this function will be reworked at some point in the near future so for now let's just focus on this implementation here um, and uh, we have to notice that uh, we have to notice the process word function and the synchronized word the process word function have these uh, call here that essentially process the physics system and make sure that the the physics is advanced for a delta time that in this case uh, is going at 60 hertz just after the processing is uh, executed we have to also synchronize the result of the processing with unreal engine and this is done by the synchronize word function we can focus only on this part of the code that is uh, usually executed and what it does is uh, uh, fetching all the bodies that uh, were moved by the physics engine and for each of them reading the, the transform and actually assigning it to Unreal Engine using the usual set world transform that we already know. And this is it. Let's see how it works in Unreal now. To demonstrate how it works, I have built this uh, super simple scene. It contains a bunch of uh, actors and basically when we play everything works as normal as it will be integrated in uh, in unreal but it's not actually uh, let me show how it works here i have prepared uh, an actor that i have just added and uh, and here you can see that is a static mesh component it has the green color and if we go to simulate physics and we enable it and we play you see that it goes through because this is not a jolt physics in order to make it a jolt body we go here type jolt we add the jolt body maker that uh, we have been already seeing and when we play boom it now collides with everything else and yeah, this is it. On the, the following video, I will show uh, much further integration of this project and some other aspect of it. And if you have any question, either leave a comment down on the video or join uh, our uh, Discord channel. I have just created a new dev channel where you can ask any question and I will be super glad to answer uh, if I can. That's everything. Thank you very much. Bye.